Well, it's the day of the eclipse, and uh, it's suppo we're supposed to have seen, uh, I'm not in the direct zone of it here in Savannah, Georgia, but we're supposed to be seeing uh, some uh, aspect of it or, or, or some sign of, you know, the darkening, and it, it hasn't hasn't uh, discernibly no started yet, at least not to my uh, knowledge, but I'll keep focusing uh, out uh, the wind, the front windshield, just in case you start to see skies darkening a, a, a touch um, to add some flavor, to add a bit of uh, atmosphere to this video. What I'm going to be talking about is something just uh, uh, not, not really relevant to to an eclipse, um, although in a way it is, because this is knowledge that uh, I uncovered. That's uh, that's easy to uncover if you if you just look into it a little bit, and uh, but that that generally speaking, I think people are ignorant of, and um, this is this. Uh, concerns popular culture. This concerns two uh, '80s movies. This concerns more. Moreover, two '80s movies directed by John Hughes, the of course the famous or infamous director of so many uh, movies that that were loved and adored by teens and young people during the '80s. Um, but. Uh, uh, to my knowledge, the, these two movies have never been talked about in tandem with one another, and that's very strange because they are, in some ways, uh, uh, just just uh, mirror reflections of one another. Except, except for something crucial, and that something crucial is the ending, and that's what's been hidden from 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 our minds. That's what. Uh, people have failed to notice, including myself, you know, including people who are versed in pop culture, you know, even more versed in pop culture than I am. And uh, certainly people who are much more Hughes fans than I am. I, I, I think in retrospect that uh, John Hughes movies were definitely not what they were cracked up to be, but they were an undeniable uh, phenomenon in the 80s. And, and as far as their effect on the uh, on, uh, on kids and how kids thought and felt about themselves. Uh, you know, I think a lot of, a lot of kids took their cues from a lot of the stuff that was in John Hughes movies, especially, especially the breakfast club. I, I think that's the, I think that's the big one because that's the one where there's the most, uh, it, it's, I guess the, the most ambitious, the most thematically ambitious, it's the one where, you know, that deals the most with, with issues and, uh, you know, their, their characters talking and presenting their, uh, you know, their struggles, uh, from all different, uh, positions on the social hierarchy of the school. Um, so even though, uh, Breakfast Club is, is, uh, not, not the fantastic, uh, uh, work of art that I thought it was when I was, you know, 15 years old, I think it's still worth watching. Um, and if, if there was one John Hughes movies, I would, I would, uh, you know, recommend it would be that one. Now I'm going to be talking about two other, uh, uh, John Hughes movies. One of them fairly popular, uh, probably, probably as popular as Breakfast Club and the other less so. Uh, and the two movies are, uh, first of all, Pretty in Pink, um, starring Mo Molly Ringwald and John Cryer and Andrew McCarthy. And the, the second one is uh, Some Kind of Wonderful, which was uh, the, sort of the last of the John Hughes teen movies ever made. Uh, and it didn't, it's, it, it, I think it's, it's, it's much less known. Um, but, uh, it, it starred Eric Stoltz, Mary Stewart, Stuart Masterson and Leah Thompson. Okay. So both of these movies 
feature a love triangle. Uh, in Pretty in Pink, you have Molly Ringwald. She's the quirky, lovable uh, heroine. Um, and she uh, has a best friend who, of course, uh, has, has a thing for her, played by John Cryer, his character called Ducky. Uh, who I think everybody who who sees Pretty in Pink would agree that Duck, Ducky or the Duck Man pretty much steals the show. I mean, it, it's his movie. He he, it's 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 not supposed to be his movie, but but through sheer force of personality, uh, he he's the reason why you, you come back and watch uh, uh, Pretty in Pink again. At least for me, anyway. I, I think it's uh, I think it's a hilarious and and. Uh, very high caliber performance. Um, uh, John Cryer's character is sort of is, is certainly nerdy and certainly spastic, um, but very likable. And uh, of course, as I said before, he's got a thing for Mo for Molly Ringwald's character. Molly Ringwald's character uh, pines after Andrew McCarthy's character. Andrew McCarthy's character, who I remember, is named Blaine. <laughs> um, is uh, this uh, very popular, uh, you know, very handsome, um, uh, very well dressed, uh, preppy guy? Uh, the, the 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 height of uh, you know the the high school hierarchy, um, and uh, so the, the, there's the, that was that there's there you see the love triangle, um, and what happens in Pretty in Pink is. Without going in, into the plot too much, uh, uh, you know, and, and getting getting uh, too intricate or involved with you know the, the specific things that happen in the story, Molly Ringwald and Andrew McCarthy actually uh, start uh, dating, and it looks like they're going to make it as a couple. And then Andrew McCarthy, due to social pressure from uh, a a really uh, despicable friend of his. <laughs> who this is this now this character also also steals the show this is shoot what's his name i can't, I can't remember the actor's name but he's he's just just the most the the, the most douchebaggish uh like uh preppy uh guy from the 80s uh you know you you see him uh and, and he's been in other things i just can't think of his name right now so so just shout it at the at the video for me um but he finds a way to twist Andrew McCarthy's arm and make him, uh, pressure him into not seeing Molly Ringwald anymore. And so, uh, Andrew McCarthy's character bows to social pressure and, uh, is, uh, and, and breaks up with Molly Ringwald's character. But the duck man is there. Uh, Ducky is there. Uh, even when she's been left behind, he, he's there to, uh, to, uh, take her to, uh, to prom. Uh, in fact, she's left, I think, I think the scene, there's an actual scene where she's sort of left behind at prom all by herself. Uh, and then the duck man shows up gallantly and, and, uh, and, you know, uh, takes her arm. And so, uh, and so. You would think that the movie would end with Molly Ringwald deciding, well, Ducky, you know, my friend Ducky, he's been my friend for a long time, but now I see, you know, because of his loyalty uh, to me, because of the honor that he's shown, uh, because uh, of uh, various things, uh, that he's, he's the one more worthy of my uh, affection. And you would think that the movie would end with the two of them together. But guess what? It doesn't end that way. Because when they showed this movie, Pretty in Pink, to test groups, they didn't like that ending. The, the test groups, uh, the, the, the test audiences they showed it to, they didn't want Molly Ringwald to end up with the dork, the nerd, the spaz. They wanted her to end up with the hot guy. Um, so 
what they did instead of having it end with uh, Molly Ringwald and John Cryer being together. They had um, uh, Andrew McCarthy uh, like uh, uh, repent of what he's done and uh, uh, tell off his his uh, his obnoxious uh, douchebag friend um, and uh, and and then when Molly Molly Ringwald sees that that he's done that uh, you know he, he tells her he's sorry and then Ducky says look he gallantly says look I can see you're you're really into him, so go 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 to him now. And so they, so she so she does. She goes to him. The movie throws us this uh, throws Ducky a bone in the, at the last minute because after after Molly Ringwald, you know the, the love of his life, the the girl he's been pining for for years, after she leaves him to go for this this uh, this no good guy who's who's uh, supposedly repented. Uh, but who, who is very handsome and, and very, uh, uh, you know, high, highly connected on the, uh, the social hierarchy. Um, uh, they, they, they have some scene in the end where some pretty girl looks at Ducky and, and gives him a come hither look and, and it's like, oh, okay, Ducky's going to get, Ducky's going to get a girl after all. So don't worry about Ducky. Ducky's fine. <laughs> He's just going to forget about it. The, all the all the time he's been pining for uh, for Molly. Um, so that's how Pretty in Pink ends. Now, some kind of wonderful mirrors Pretty in Pink almost uh, almost exactly. You know, they're 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 partic the particulars are different, uh, but uh, it's again about a love triangle. And in this case, the love triangle is, uh, or the main character of of, uh, of the uh, of the movie is Eric Stoltz. Eric Stoltz is we're supposed to think he's like, even though he was a you know extremely good looking guy, uh, we're supposed to think you know, he's he's like this this nerd this this like artsy outcast uh, because he likes to paint and. <laughs> and he works a blue collar job. Um, it's 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 very unbelievable. It's I I, I think Molly Ringwald as a character, I don't, I never really saw her as a great beauty. So I think she's more. It was more believable as her, just to have her be this, uh, you know, somebody who if, who is not on the top rung uh, of uh, of the hierarchy. Um, because again, uh, she's she's you know she's, she's not she's uh, not ugly, but she's not what I would call a beauty queen. But in this case, you got Eric Stoltz, you know, male model, at the, at the you know, actually in his mid twenties, you know, uh, gorgeous eyes and all, <laughs> you know, no homo, Eric Stoltz. Um, but he's, he, we're supposed to think he's a high school outcast. We're supposed to think he's in high school, first of all. He's obviously not. He obviously, all the characters in Some Kind of Wonderful are way too old to be high school students. Um, that's sort of the case with, with most high school movies in the 80s. But uh, especially with this one, with Some Kind of Wonderful. So the premise of Some Kind of Wonderful is Eric Stoltz has a pal... Uh, Who's uh, like this tomboy girl? She likes to drum, uh, and she's—I don't know whether Mary Stuart Masterson, the the, the person, is—I uh, don't know if she actually had an had an ample an ample chest, and they uh, just tried to make her look more flat-chested and more boy-like. But in the movie, she wears, you know like punkish boy clothes and she's got short hair she gets taunted for being a lesbian um which is a scene you wouldn't have in, in today's in today i mean in, t in a movie today she would be a lesbian but uh but in the 80s uh, that that wasn't they didn't do they didn't go there usually um no so so she's she she uh is eric stoltz's friend but but it's obvious that uh, 
she's carrying a torch for him and she's into him he doesn't see it he doesn't know it uh, um, <laughs> unlike uh, <laughs> unlike Molly and and, uh, and um, John Cryer uh, you know in this case he's he's clueless about that he's pining after the beautiful character played by Leah Thompson um, so you, so again, it's it's this this mirror this almost exact mirroring, plot wise, character wise, except this time, it's a uh, it's a love triangle with one guy and two girls instead of two guys and one girl, and in this one, the guy is pining for a, a high high status uh, girl, you know, a, a very uh, attractive and. Um, like there's one very gratuitous shot of her in a bra, like like posing in the in the girls' locker room, uh, you know, where we see all of her curves and and uh, you know just like she's she's posing for a, a you know a, a fashion magazine uh, and uh, Mary Stewart Masterson looks at her and you know looks at looks at her own body and thinks thinks to herself you know. Um, you know, she's she's got me by a mile. Of course, in real life, if they'd let Stuart Masterson, Mary Stuart Masterson, look, you know, prettier, she she probably would have been just as pretty as as uh, Leah Thompson. But but in the movie, they they try to you know they 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 boy her up. They 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 don't make her look ugly, but they make her look you know less less uh, feminine. And act less feminine. She's basically a tomboy, which you could still be in the 80s without being a lesbian. Um, basically, if you're a tomboy today, people just think, oh, that's lesbian coded. Lesbian, she must be a lesbian. But that wasn't the case in the 80s. People were more, people were actually more open minded, I think, in the 80s than they are today about things, things like this, contrary to popular belief. Um, uh, you could look "quote unquote" gay and not be gay uh, in the '80s, and, and, and today, if you look somewhat outside of what the norm is for, you know, your uh, your gender, then you're automatically assumed to be homosexual, and you you really you really have to, you know, it's incumbent upon you to admit it to the world. Uh, and uh, to come out of the closet and so forth. That's that's more like what they what they try to do uh, to people now. But anyway, the the uh, some kind of wonderful ends with uh, climactic again without getting into the weeds of the plot too much. Uh, a scene in which Eric Stoltz actually wins a date with Leah Thompson and uh, goes out with her, and Mary Stuart Masterson is just watching. Or, you know, um, uh, from the th from the shadows, uh, jealously, and um, and you think they're going to wind up together, and in fact they do. They they actually kiss at one point, um, and so it looks like uh, you know the the supposed the artsy boy uh, who wasn't popular, even though he's like like I said male model looks, but putting that aside, uh, the artsy boy, you know, wins over the, the popular girl, and looks like they're going to be a couple, but at the end, the very reverse of what happened in P Pretty in Pink takes place in some kind of wonderful. At the end of Pretty in Pink, um, the, uh, the, cru the, 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 the Molly Ringwald's crush who we think she's going to maybe end up with, who seems more worthy uh, as a boyfriend because of the way her actual boyfriend treated her, he he says no, go go to him, go to him, it's okay, I'm 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 not going to let you not go to him. I know he'll make you happy. And uh, in some kind of wonderful, it's the exact opposite. In, instead of uh, Eric Stoltz's um, tomboy girlfriend. Or the tomboy uh, best friend who has a crush on him. Uh, instead of her saying, "Look, I know, I know she'll make you. I know she, I know you're in love with her," uh, <clears throat> and um, 
so I'm going to be gallant and, uh, uh, you know, say, and, go, and let you go to her because she's, uh, you know, one you really want to be with. Instead, uh, it's revealed that Eric Stoltz uh, suddenly sees Mary Stewart Masterson, the tomboy, uh, uh, as, as the real love of his life. And it's Leah Thompson, the beauty queen, who says, look, you know, take these earrings you bought for me and give them to her. I think she's the one you really, you really wanted all along and just maybe didn't know it. So, <laughs> so what, in conclusion, what happens? What, it, what happens at the end of Pretty in Pink is that the, uh, the girl ends up with the gorgeous... Uh, popular guy and ends up leaving behind her uh, her friend uh, who who uh, who loved her who, who was uh, again had a crush on her for a long time and who who was loyal to her um, because again and this is this is something that I think has been acknowledged I think this is this is not speculation on my part uh, because the test groups all said, we don't want to see Molly end up with John Cryer. We want to see her end up with Andrew McCarthy, the good-looking guy, the popular guy. But for whatever reason, I don't know if some kind of wonderful was was test test grouped, uh, test marketed, or, or, or anything like that. But for some reason, when the main character is a guy, then we have to see him reject the beautiful girl and instead be with uh, the the tomboy best friend um, and choose her at the end. So you see the uh, the the ending is in the, is the exact opposite. When it's a female character, when it's a female, when it's a romance involving two guys and a girl, and one of the guys is nerdy, and one of the guys is is gorgeous. Uh, then the audience wants the the uh, the girl to end up with the gorgeous guy. When it's two uh, two girls and a guy, and the uh, uh, the and, and and one of the the, the 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 female character who's being overlooked at first, the tomboyish, uh, you know, short-haired. Uh, Butch cut, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, punk punk dressing drummer girl. Um, she has to be the one who uh, the the hero chooses over the beauty queen, over the the pretty popular girl. Hmm. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Why do you suppose that is? I have a theory. Okay? Here's my theory. Uh, my theory is that of the test groups that uh, were, were used for Pretty in Pink, um, it was the women who said, no, we don't want Molly with John Cryer, the nerd. We want Molly with uh, Andrew McCarthy. The, the handsome guy. And it's my guess that if there were test groups, again, this is speculation, but if there were test groups for some kind of wonderful, it was probably overwhelmingly the, the female contingent, who the ones who related more to the, the, you know, because you're supposed to relate, you kind of do, if you're a girl watching this movie, you know, you're pining for Eric Stoltz, uh, so you're relating to the girl who wants to be with him but can't be with him, and you sort of are hostile towards or, or you, you uh, are jealous of the girl that he really wants to be with, the, the pretty popular girl. So, so it's, my, it's my theory, my speculation, that in order to appease those same, not, not the same women, but to appease the female contingent, that probably were the ones who made made a stink about it. Um, they they opted to do the to go the very opposite route, to have 
the handsome hero end up with the not so good looking girl or maybe she'll she'd be good looking if she you know dressed uh more femininely and grew out her hair uh and and you know wore makeup or whatever um but they but but they pointedly don't have him end up with the beautiful girl so what this shows me is that there is a double standard um and that double standard is, uh, well, when, when you're when you're talking about something in the romance genre, which these these movies aren't they're not just romances, but they are. They they there is you know they are uh, about romances, um, and when you have something in the romance genre, women want the girl that they that they identify with, which in Pretty in Pink is Molly Ringwald, they want her to end up with a handsome guy. They don't want her to end up with the nerdy guy, even if the nerdy guy is way more uh, worthy of the heroine. They want, to, they want things to be worked out so that, you know, even if the handsome guy did, be, did some things he shouldn't have done, that... Uh, he feels sorry about it, and all that get, gets worked out, and then she ends up with him. Instead of her saying to him, "Look, you screwed me over before. You could, you probably screwed me over again. I know you. I know I can't trust you. I'm going to stick with Ducky, you know, the, the nerdy spaz who, but but who, uh, who I know is a good guy. No, they don't want that. They want her to go with the, the hot guy. But." When when the when it's turned around, when the proverbial shoe is on the other uh, other proverbial foot, <laughs> and uh, the uh, the main uh, character is a guy, and uh, the the girl that's pining for him is his uh, you know the, his friend, but who's who's really secretly has a crush on him, but who's not as pretty as the girl that he's uh, that he's uh, that he's pining for. Then we have to see her, him decide, ultimately, to reject the beautiful girl, and be with uh, the tomboy, uh, <laughs> the the butch cut tomboy, um, flat chested butch cut tomboy. <laughs> I think if if men were more vo- vociferous about these kinds of things, uh, they they would uh, say. Shoot, you should have gone with Leah Thompson. You know, she was hotter. Um, but what you know, uh, or or if they, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's just more important for women to see their heroine, if especially if it's somebody who they're rooting for, uh, uh, to to see her succeed by winning the popular handsome guy. Um, and for whatever reason. It's more important for the guy to to choose uh, to be with the uh, the equivalent of what you know what D- Ducky was in Pretty in Pink, the the nerdy uh, spazzy guy, um, to be with the less pretty girl, to see that she really liked him all along, and that and and that now she and now he realizes that all along he's actually been in love with her there's a sudden sudden right turn uh that doesn't make much narrative sense but uh, but there you go anyway so that's if you like a red pilled reading of uh pretty in pink and some kind of wonderful if you've seen those movies let me know what you think if you think i've got something wrong or or if something's out of whack or if you want to take me to task or if you agree and, and want to to add your own two cents, please leave your comments below. Still no real eclipse around here that I can see. All right.